I, I had them in the car, but I wore the Chucks to the gym. Mm. Did you wear the Docs to work though? Docs to work. Switched out to the Chucks. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. And sweatbands. Oof. Where? On my wrist. Gross. Where else do you put sweatbands? On your, like a, like a, like a sweatband? On your head? Oh yeah, yeah. Like a, like a headband sweatband? Yeah. Your headband sweatband. Like, okay. like Richard Simmons? You know, for a while I wanted to sell the sweatbands on the wrist as merch. <laughs> I mean, we're a little outdated for that. I but think. this is why it would be amazing. I'm outdated. Yeah, there it you go. fits You're... with my. Yeah, but I don't think anyone else is outdated enough to want to wear the. Sweatbands. Disagree. Have you seen my crowd? Y- yeah. So I, I think we're all wearing sweatbands. I don't think anyone's going to be actively buying sweatbands. You know what? Not sweatpants. Sweatpants. So I said sweatbands. People buy sweatpants. Yeah, I'm going to tell you what. I'm going to make made, them. If just, you made I like weird shit sweatpants with I like weird shit on the ass, people would buy. I I agree. Like, the girls would, lo- the girls I agree. would love that. I agree. Holy because also, shit. I like weird shit, and it's on your butt. Nah, I don't think anybody's mind except for yours would go there. And yours. I did not. Oh, okay. Mine went pure sexual, actually. <laughs> mine didn't go poop. Oh, that's funny. Oh, mine went poop. Yeah. Mine, mine went not. poop. You went sex. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. That is interesting. Look at how you raised me. Look at how you raised me. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, man. All right, let's see. Hey, are we rolling? <laughs> yeah, we oh, Hey, he's, everybody. He's been rolling. Hey, welcome to Hey, man. Hey, man. I'm Josh. I am Jacob. Hello, everybody. Wow. Look at this dude. What up? What up? What up? What up? What up? Yeah, man. So I don't even know where to start. What's up? How yeah, you been? Dude, what good. it do, baby boo? What? Did you call me baby boo? Yeah, what it do, baby boo? No, I don't know if I like baby boo. Baby boo it is. No. <laughs> <laughs> baby boo sounds like something you would call. Like, what, it, what it do, baby Jew? Yeah, that's better. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I like how that's better. Well, I would call you something like uh, Papa Jew. Hey, baby Jew. Yeah, but I'm not the baby Jew. You're the baby Jew. You're shorter than me. You're the baby. Baby, that doesn't necessarily mean smaller. Baby Jew. That's <laughs> 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 Ah, my first day back, man. I'm coming out fire. You're so <laughs> ridiculous. It's crazy Ooh. how ridiculous you are. Yeah, man. I dressed up. I'm wearing a sweater. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, I love the the crew neck you're wearing. Yeah, the Bowie crew neck? Yeah. Fire. This is the difference between a sweater and a crew neck sweatshirt. This sweater. is a perfect example for you and I to display the difference between a crew neck sweatshirt and a sweater. So, give me real quick, real quick. Yes. They're exactly the same except, except the material. Which is what differentiates sweater. A sweater, sweater from a sweatshirt. Sweater? Sweater. That's a sweatshirt. Sweater. There are no sweaters made out of that material. Sweater. Nah. Sweater. Yeah, you're not going to get me on this one. I, I feel, by the way, I, I won that that before all the old people agree nah. with you. That's different. The young people agree with me too. They that don't. is not a sweater. This is a sweater. Sweater. I mean, sweater. If we put it out on socials and the winning, the person who loses the contest gets, has to do something terrible. Look, man. A yes. bunch of people can be wrong. Like, here's the thing. that You might, you won the last one, but also, in my mind, I won because a ton of other people were wrong. A bunch of people can be wrong, and I can still be right. And is the, that is the most Gen Z way to look at something. I have, you're, I'm not wrong because everyone else says I'm wrong, even though they, everyone says the same thing. Yeah. Exactly. It's a great way to go through life. It's awesome. It really is. It helps a lot. Because you can't, there's no way you can, can be proven wrong. I can't lose. Yeah. In my mind, I'm always a winner. Yeah. That is such a nice way to go through life. I love it. I'm envious. It's not how I go through life, but it's how I'm going through this situation. Tell me what you think about these glasses. I lost my glasses again. I'm just going to tell you right now, I can see how many fingerprints and how dirty they are from here. So why don't you yeah. wipe them off real quick? <laughs> <laughs> I could see that from across the table. I can't see it. I know. That's why I'm trying to help you. So that when we zoom in, we don't just see fingerprints on your 
Well, why are we going to zoom in? Because it's funny when, like, when you put him on, Matt's just going to zoom in and just. That's go, not what he does. We could cut it. Might be funny for a clip. What What's funny about that? Oh, I'm so I'm so happy to be back and pestering you. <laughs> it's really great. <laughs> oh, these good are your God. mom's. These are mom, your mom's glasses. They're so foggy. What's up, Edna Mode? Holy shit! Edna <laughs> from the <laughs> Untouchables. <laughs> What's up, Diddy? <laughs> what the Untouchables. The Incredibles? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Untouchables <laughs> was a movie with Kevin Costner. Yeah. And Sean Connery. <laughs> yeah, and not yeah, that's animated. Sh- not animated. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about Edna Mode from The Incredibles. Yeah, 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 yeah. The pilot mode. Edna Mode? Edna Mode. Alamode. Anyways. Alamode. Alamode. Jacob Wolf is back. Hello. Um. Okay, let's, I guess, just... People had a ton of questions. Why yeah. you left, when you left, how you left. Um, and I told everybody that I would not answer any questions having to do with you because I was going to let you tell your own story. Um, so the floor is yours to discuss it from whenever you want. I might interject with questions that I think people will have as you're telling the story. Absolutely. Um, or telling your whatever your it's not like your version, it is the it's my like, story. Yeah, it's your story. So I'll probably interject with questions that I may have or, or that I think other people might have, even if I already know the answer. Right, just for context. Yep. Um, but um for those of you who don't know, I think everybody listening probably does. I think so. Jacob went into sober living September twenty fourth. Correct. Um and uh, you can take it from there. Yeah, okay. Um, it's like a monologue for me, I guess. This is my story. Um, yeah, I, that uh, should come with like a rainbow yeah, and a star. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, or it's like Criminal Minds where it's like, these are their stories. Dum, dum, dum. Yeah, okay. Um, and so, yeah. So what he said, I went into Sober Living uh, September 24th. Um, what led to that? I'll just give like kind of a brief synopsis. Um, I've been using pretty consistently uh, for the last year from like September to September of 2023 to 2024. Uh, My drug of choice was uh, cocaine uh, and alcohol. I found really quickly that both of them went hand in hand and I, I wasn't, I found myself not doing just one or the other. I always found myself doing both. Um, it turned into a pretty heavy usage for me, um, alcohol included. I mean, it was it was nice though because like the alcohol I could kind of skate by with and kind of get a little cheaper than my drugs because when I was at comedy clubs, I could get free drinks, mm-hmm. which could kind of help back and forth with uh, with the usage. I um I went pretty nuts for about a year, and um, at one point my what uh you know i would like to call either a higher power or my brain or or you know something something bigger than me just told myself that it was that you know i was i was done not not like done dead but like like my my drug usage career was over like there was something that told me i needed to stop i needed to get help or i needed to work on something um and so i ended up texting you my dad while i was looking at him sorry i probably should have said that um i texted my dad and i was like look i I Where were you? Uh, I was in London. Um, I was flying back the next day, and I was, you know, I, I texted him. You know, I need some help. I'm, um, the key word for me, what key words was, I feel like I'm drowning. Was the big yes. one. And um, look, when I, I will say on a funnier note, not funnier note, but on a serious note, on, on when I asked for help, I did not think I would end up where I would end up. Um, that's like, so crazy to me. You said that to me a couple times. Well, be- yeah, because like when I asked for help, I've again, I've, I, I've, do you remember the whole text? Which, which one? The one that the drowning was in? I said drowning a bunch of times. Yeah. But do you remember the one you said? And we can cut this, obviously, if you don't. Sure. Like, I'm a, I'm a drug addict. I, ha- I think I have a gambling problem. I'm a drug addict. I'm a gambling addict. I'm five months behind on my car payment, four months behind on registration. I think I'm drowning. I feel like I'm drowning. Feel like I'm drowning. Yeah, yeah. But again, by the way, like I said, when I asked for help, I figured we'd all kind of sit and have a conversation, which we did, but like figure out ways and what to do. And um, 
You also asked me, you were like, let, let me try to figure this out at the house by myself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Well, and, and that usually works really well for people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> miss a hundred percent of the shots, you don't take not changing uh, any of the routine, just deciding. No, no changing the routine, but still being at my house. Like when I asked for help, me getting, look again, it is what it is. We've had this discussion already. Yeah. Did I completely agree with being put in a sober living home? No. Do I think parts of it was good for me? Yes. But I also left on my own accord. Just and just so everybody knows, J, he, you did leave early out mm-hmm. of the sober living. Mm-hmm. And when I say early, I had said three months. 90 days. 90 That's days. And so just so everybody knows, and Jacob knows this, I'm not spilling the beans, neither Beth or I were in favor of you leaving early. I, I got to be honest. Not a single person was in favor of me leaving early. Yep, zero people. Except the dudes in the house around me. And like the people at uh, Thrive, which is an outpatient treatment uh, center that I went to. Uh, I got a lot of, honestly, I got a lot of encouragement. A lot of people were like, look, these are, this is what I'm worried about you for. And this is what, you know, I think could go wrong. But a lot, most of the people were like, look, if you were one of the strongest dudes here, like we think if anyone's going to be able to keep safe, it's going to be you. By the way, and I do want to also say, by saying that we didn't think he should leave early, Neither Beth or I were negative about it. No. And we, even though we don't believe it was the best thing for you, we, look, man, there, there are people who do do, mm. who do leave early and are successful. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we're not putting any negative juju on it. No, we, we, we are still support you a hundred percent and, and, um, um, have spent a lot of time trying to figure out what our role in the whole thing was. Too. Yeah. Uh, what, like in my addition? Yeah. In the whole, y- yes, but in a bigger picture, not well, in the actual addiction. Okay. Well, well, what do you mean by that? Because there wasn't, no, there, here's the thing. Nobody had a role in anything. I like, know. Yeah, yeah. Like nobody had a role in what I was doing because nobody knew what the fuck I was doing. Very true. By the way, people have asked me. I mean, I, I also want to apologize. I want to apologize to Matt also for the last probably eight months in this studio. I was recovering from the night before. That's why I had the tissues in front of me all the time. Yeah. And I was still actively doing it because I didn't want to make sure that I wasn't super sniffly during the pot. Which Did, you were. Didn't work out, by yeah. the way. Um, but so I I do want to apologize to listeners, Matt, to you also for, you know, bringing drugs into your space and and to everybody. Like, I... I, I Pe- people have asked me, you know, is he in for just weed? And I would be like, you know, I, no. I'm obviously, no, I'm not saying anything. But like, uh, did I know? How would I not know if we toured together? And because uh, he... Jacob and I would spend the stay in the same room. And I would say probably the majority of the weekends you were out with me, you were not doing coke. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Well, the weekends I would tell myself because I was mainly with you, it would be like, yeah, I'm, this is a dangerous game for me to be playing. I'm not going to be doing it while I'm here. Um, and also like, I don't know. It was the addict brain in me that was like, this is your break for the week. Yeah. Like when you go on the road, you're not taking it with you. You're not going to look for it on the road. That didn't work out so well. There were a couple weekends on the road where I just, did happen to kind of find it. Yeah. Um, and so... It finds you, man, if you're looking for it. Oh, it, look, here's the thing. If you're looking... Cocaine is not hard to find. No, but also it's that's the dangerous part about it. It's yep. because it could be cut with carfentanil, which gives yes. you, you know... Yes. Right then and there. Yes. Um, and so... It, it, look, if I wanted to find it, I found it, which I tried not to on the weekends. There were some weekends where there I was just like... I was on an absolute bender during the week that I was here. And I just needed something. I, like I thought that I needed it to continue through my weekend. Um, there were some weekends I tried and just didn't find it. And then just kind of was like, all right, cool. Like I would look for it like the first day we were there. And if I didn't find it, I'd be like, all right, cool. Like yeah. that, that would be it. Like I, 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 I wouldn't say like, and I mean this seriously, like I, it definitely took control of a part of my life and a good chunk of it. But I'm so happy I caught it before it completely took over everything. Yeah, you know, I was interested to know when you went in to Sober Living and you started to go to meetings, how you would feel listening to other people's bottoms, because that sounds dirty, but it isn't. (laughs) But listening 
I, I it was one of the things that I was concerned about with the guy who was running your house. I was like, I'm really worried he's going to go into these meetings and be like, oh, I'm not that bad. And it would actually be like, yeah, I don't need to be here. I'm not that bad. What you know? What's funny is it. It kind of did. That's later later on down the line. But the first 45, 45, 45 days, I was in there. I was you know every meeting I would leave. Honestly, even still when I leave meetings and I hear people's stories back here in Vegas, I leave grateful because I I that's what I say. I'm like, damn, I I really didn't let it get that bad. Yeah, and I'm really glad I didn't let it get that bad because like there's. There was one woman I loved hearing her speak. I heard her speak numerous times when I was in LA on, at different meetings. Um, I won't give her name out. I won't give you know ah, for, for the yeah. sake of for the sake of the program. It's a one of the A's is anonymous, yeah. right? That's what I'm saying. So for the sake of the program, I won't be giving any names now. But there was a one woman. She was an Irish woman, and I loved hearing her speak. She had this crazy tone of voice. She did not give a fuck, and she was like, "Look, I'm going to tell you my fucking story," and there was no filter about it. But and she seemed to be doing really well and seemed to be speaking at, like, at, speaking at a, lot of, uh, a lot of meetings. But to hear her fucking story, and it was like her and a bunch of other people where it's like, I've been doing this. Like, I did this and this for 15 to 20 years. Mm-hmm. I lost this. I lost this. I lost this. And I'm like, God damn, dude. Like, I'm so glad I never let it get to that. And I think, and, and part of that for me is, I think I'm, truthfully, I think I'm a very self-aware human being. Yeah. I think I'm a, an extremely self-aware person who understands the severity of certain scenarios. Let me stop you for a second. Define self-aware for me. So I know what you're talking about when you say I'm a self-aware person. I, f- I feel like very self-aware about, I'm self-aware about. Uh, what do you mean by self-aware? I, I, what do you mean what I mean? When you're talking about, I, I feel like I'm a very self-aware person. I, I feel Referencing like, what? I feel like I'm so, when it comes to my addiction, I was very self-aware of like, uh, especially like as we got a little further on, like I didn't need therapists. I would figure things out myself. I didn't need therapists to tell me this is why you're feeling this and this is why you're feeling this. Like when I was in my therapy sessions at Thrive, I talked for an hour and a half straight. My therapist would be like, oh, okay. She wouldn't have to like, she would maybe ask me one question, but then I would be like, here's my answer. And she was like, well, I'm glad you know that. Like I'm self-aware about my addiction. I'm self-aware about why I was using. I'm self-aware. Why were you using? Um, Because I felt worthless. Um, I still kind of feel worthless. Not that bad anymore. But like, Felt worthless. Um, I felt like also once I started, once I started using, at first it was fun. Like at first it was fun, go out, you know, mics and whatnot and just have a grand old time. And then it got to a point to where I was like. Uh, uh, mics, by the way, guys. Are, open, open mics. Yeah, sorry, not just a bunch of guys named Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <laughs> Yeah, I do. I'm just trying to tell people um, who might be listening. They're like, he just hung out with guys named Mike. It was Mike. It was uh, just Mike night. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> whatever every bar you walked into, you had to have that name. It's Mike. Mike. Mike's. Yep, that's a bummer. Um, and I, I felt worthless because I felt like I don't know. Like also part of the comedy career, like I knew I wasn't stepping up to the plate on the things I needed to do for work. Not mm-hmm. not on stage, but like outside, like this and. And like, I, I felt like I was stepping up a little bit going to Mike's, but I feel like it was just kind of a facade that I put up because I wanted to make it seem like I was putting in the work when in reality, I was just going out for four hours a night to do a three minute set just so I could do drugs because mm-hmm. I didn't want to do it in my household, even though I was still doing it in my household, but <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I wanted to have the freedom to do it outside of the household and also, you know, doing drugs by yourself is sad. And I, I think that's part of where I, hit, I, yeah. I went down so fast. I most of the time was doing drugs by myself, and that was that made me sad because it was like ah, I should probably stop, but my body couldn't. Like I just could not stop. Mm-hmm. And so when I was doing it with friends, it seemed more acceptable because I wasn't doing the whole bag by myself. I was like, oh, that disappeared fast. Oh wait, I did it with some friends, so that's not that bad. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I'm trying to justify my usage in certain ways. Um, I also think like you know the the bullying I took from middle school and high school, like for the the longest time, like my peers told me I was worthless. Mm-hmm. And my peers told me that I wasn't good enough. And my peers told me, you know, this, that, and the other. And I feel like at one point later on in my life, it started to really set in. And I think it's why set- has that changed in you? That's one of the reasons why it- I always thought you should be in therapy. And we've talked about it a million times, yeah. even on this show. Yeah. And so I know that about you and how you feel about yourself. And do you feel like, cause you said, I, I, 
used to feel worthless. Well, I still kind of feel worthless. Like, how, why has that changed? And if it hasn't changed, what are you doing since you are aware of it? What are you doing since you know that's the thing for everybody that pulls them down mm. is their self worth. Mm -hmm. So when you're when you don't believe you're worth anything, that's what you'll attract, mm -hmm. and that's how you'll behave. Yeah, in your world, right? So I know that's a bunch of questions. How did it change? Um, if it isn't fully changed, what are you going to do to make sure that you continue to work on that? Uh, I think it's really just a lot of communication. I feel like the feelings kind of came about, you know, whenever they did. Um, March of this past year when I was in Nashville, when we were in Nashville and we saw those, remember we saw the, the I told you I saw those two high school people? Yeah. In the front row. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just got engaged, by the way. Good shout for them. Good for them. Haley and Nick. Um, Nick was one of those dudes that used to pick on me. And not directly it was him. He was just in those groups. And like, yep. now that I look back on it, Nick was actually a good dude. He was just like, it was like a friendly tease. But like, I couldn't see through that because his friends were just absolutely ridiculed me. Yep. So I never really saw the difference back in high school. I see it now. Um, I, I think it's more just like, like that's when it started to change a little bit, I think for the better. Because it was like, you know, like I said, like we put all this like dumb shit aside and they still came out. They didn't even know I was going to be there. But they stayed to say hey and support it and like said, what's up? Do you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. like, I feel like that kind of turned it around a little bit. But I feel like the main thing that, that helps me out now is just communicating because whenever I would feel some sort of way about me or my life or about my career or uh, about anything that pertained to me, I would do drugs to hide from those feelings. And so... You've been I, smoking weed for a long time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Weed is the... Whatever you want to say about it. And guys, you guys know that I have been weed free. We, no matter what you say about it, and I know you you and I have different ideas about if you should be smoking weed. Uh -huh. It does put a, bu a bubble around your emotions and how you can access that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And not even, but like, but also like I'm talking about like in the last year. Yes. Like, like I was using cocaine not to feel, but then I was doing so much that I was using cocaine to feel something. Mm-hmm. Like I would do so much that I would just kind of feel numbed out at a certain point and I was just walking about life. And then I was like, oh, I want to feel happy or I just want to feel. Mm -hmm. I was doing drugs. So I used it for one reason then ended up using it for the complete opposite. Um, and I, I kind of knew that. Like my, and, and I'm not a physical harmer when it comes to self-harm. My self-harm is usage, it's drugs. Like my self-harm is like... Can I add in what your self-harm is? Your self-harm is not doing the things in your life that are good for me. Whether that's business or whatever. Yeah. Is, is. It's self-sabotage. I, 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 yeah. You are death from a thousand paper cuts. Yeah. I, not I, one thing, but lots of little things. Yeah. I just, I try to like implode everything in yes. my life. It's, yes. just, it's a self-sabotage. Yes. And drugs was definitely one of those things, but also like I use drugs when I say like, when I say that, like I use drugs. Look, I didn't want to die. And I want to say this to Cameron. Yeah. I didn't want to die. Okay. Like I didn't want to end my life. However, I was using a drug that laced or not can kill you on the spot. I was using a drug that if it hit my heart at the wrong time, I could have a heart attack and die. If it was laced with whatever OD, right? You know what I'm saying? So I was using a drug not wanting to die, but I was thinking if it happened, then if it, ha it happened, like it was like, eh. like it was a thought, but I was always like, it was always, eh. like I didn't really care about it. Like if it happened, it happened. Like yeah, was, in that was, text chain you sent me, there was a lot of that talk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's that's exactly what it was, though. Mm -hmm. It was like, I got to a point to where I was like, I I don't want my life to end. Like, I, I was in such a good point in my life. Like, not drugs or mental-wise, but like, on the outside, you look at my life, it's fucking awesome. Like, I, like, I, like, from an outsider look in, I moved to Vegas. I live in this awesome house with my girlfriend and my dog. I perform comedy uh, every Monday in Vegas. We travel every weekend. I have two hours of stage time. I'm going to open mics. We have a podcast. Like, the outside looking in, it looks like I'm living a very fulfilling life. Do you know what I mean? I do, but your inside... They're right. That's not what I'm saying. Though. Yes, I'm but, but I'm, here's, what, here's what causes huge turmoil. Is that your inside knows that that outside is how it looks in. And it, all you're talking about is this is a lie. Your inside. This life is a lie. I'm not worth... I don't... I'm not worthy of all this stuff. A hundred percent. And yeah. that's, again... Like, yeah, I'm, I'm just saying, like, from the outside looking in, like, my life looked cool. Yeah, but, but your life is cool, dude. My life is cool, yeah, 100%. But definitely the 
how I felt about myself affected how I thought I should have, like what I should have. So let's go back to the original question. How, if you do feel like you're, you have, you're wor more worthy now, or you said you kind of feel like it, or you're getting better, like how, how do you, how did that start to, your self-worth start to improve? And now that you're home, outside of those confines, and back in life, how are you going to make sure that it continues to improve rather than slips back? Because what I do know from science, one of the reasons I insisted on 90 days is 90 days is scientifically proven is how your brain changes habits. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do, man, to continue to improve how you feel about yourself? And I think self-confidence and self-worth are two different things. I think you have self-confidence. Yeah. But to me, that's two different things. Definitely. So I, you have self-confidence. I see it on stage. You have confidence, but your self-worth is not there. So w what are you going to do to make sure that it doesn't slip back? Because it's not something that if you don't continue to work on, just continues to improve. So what is it? I know you said that thing in March helped, but you continued to do drugs seven months after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I think... I think truthfully, just communicating, like, uh, like being, like communicating you, how you, with who, you, like, you what know, does that mean? You gotta let me. I'm getting. Okay, to that. okay you just okay. gotta let me finish my sentence. Okay, well, Thanks. you said it twice already, and you hadn't gone through with it. So well, that's because you interrupted me twice. So I didn't interrupt you twice. You, you did. Wait, you no, did. I did You're not. still interrupting me. Okay. Did not. Yeah. <laughs> communicating, man. <laughs> like, I, again, using the drugs really numbed a lot about a lot of my mental, a lot of like how to function, just regularly. So, like for me. Anytime I, like when I was in sober living, anytime I had some sort of craving or any feeling about myself or this or, you know, anything that I would usually use drugs to numb, it was talking about it. It was talking about it with a fellow addict. It was calling an alcoholic. It was talking to my therapist. It was talking to, talking to somebody who had more time than me because I was one of the young guns in there. Like I had, a was staying with people who had, you know, nine months, 10 months, two years. I knew people who had 20 years. P.S. guys, I know people thought I sent them to this bougie place in Malibu. Fuck no. That is, that was not the game plan. Nope. I don't, I don't think, listen, man, I good for you if you go there and I hope it works, but that's not real life. Yeah. But also like I didn't need a detox or a rehab. Okay. Did you think I did? Did you try to get me in one before sober living? No, I weighed the differences. I didn't think you needed a detox, but I think you needed a rehab. Yeah, I know. We disagree. Yeah. Yeah. But I thought you needed 90 days away from everything. Like, yeah, no, I, I get that. Yeah. You're going to put me in a rehab where they just like no cell phone. They yep. just cut me off. Yeah. Real. Yeah. You're, that is psycho. <laughs> that is psycho. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's Had I, you told me it was a rehab, I would have said no in the first place. You told me in our conversation it's a sober living, not a rehab. Yep, I, that's because that's what it was. But I, I, know, I, had, I, know. I had, had looked into rehab. Had you put me in a rehab, had you, I said that we're going to a rehab, I'd have been like, no. Yeah, Absolutely I mean, the that, fuck not. Yeah. No, zero, zero chance 90 days cut off completely from the world. No fucking way. You would have had to put me in a psych ward after that. I would have lost my fucking mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, listen. We have different ideas about what would have been best and what is best. But at the end of the day, you have to follow the path that you think is best for you. Right. Yeah. And yeah, that, yeah. Yeah. And that's why I left early. What we're talking about communication. Communication. Okay. Yeah. See, you interrupted me again. Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, man, like, it's just, you know, it, it's, it's the communicating part for me that I, I haven't had for a really long time because I haven't been able to feel my emotions for the last year. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I haven't been able to process anything because the minute I was like, oh, don't like that feeling, drugs. Like it was what I would do because I just, I didn't want to feel, I didn't want to feel certain feelings. I didn't want to feel uh, this, this or that way about myself, about my life, about whatever. Like I didn't like my, my self pity or self whatever for my, for me. So I would just, I would kill it with drugs. Because that was just that for me was the easiest way. Mm -hmm. Communicating now and talking about it like is what's most important to me, and like continuing with the program and going to meetings and um, 
I'm, so, I'm truthfully, like, I'll be honest with you. I'm truthfully still up in the air about a sponsor. Uh, I, I, I still want to go to meetings and I still want to, you know, work it a little bit and like, you know, meet people and talk about it and this and that. And, uh, but I don't know. I, I feel like I'm still kind of up in the air about a sponsor. How come? I, I don't know. Like, I hate that book. The book was written in 1935. It's in ye old English. Mm-hmm. It's fucking very hard to understand. Mm-hmm. It, it like that like that's it for me, man. It's like it's just the the book and everyone's like you have to there you have to believe in God to get through this, and they're like or a higher power. Yeah, like, that's I, I, I let me let me yep, get there. Yep, yep. Let me get there. Uh, but I also feel like me being in this, like I also like I still kind of feel like an outsider because I feel like I'm the only person who like even when I was in L.A., the only person in those rooms who doesn't believe in God. Every person in those rooms that I've met, their higher power is not the universe like me. Their higher power is God. And they're like, I give all my grace to God and mm-hmm. this and that. Like, he did all the work for me. And there's just part, there's just some things that I just like still don't fully agree with in the program. And maybe that's just because like religion has always been such a hard thing for me. Mm-hmm. Like religion's all, like I've always been like, uh, like a, like a, like sh- strong headed when it comes to what my religious beliefs are. My religious mm-hmm. beliefs are is I don't believe in religion. I believe that, that, you know, everything is just set up the way it is. Like, look, I, if religion helps you, cool. If religion helps you get up, if religion is what helps drive you and gives you hope. If religion is what gives you hope and gives you uh, a bright outlook on a day. Awesome. That's awesome. for me. But I, I just don't believe in any of it. So, but, but the word God in this setting from everyone I've talked to is just whatever you're giving yourself up to. It could be a cat. It could, for a lot of people, it's energy. For a lot of people, it's spirituality. It's just something that is bigger than you. No, no, no. I, I understand that. Yeah. I, there was one dude I did meet. He's like, my greater power is the ocean. And I was, yeah. and I was like, awesome, dude. Right. But it, it's it's still like, even like, the, the, meeting, the meetings in LA, honestly, I, I like the meetings in LA. Yeah. The meetings I've gone to, excuse me, the meetings I've gone to in Vegas, old so let me ask you dude it's just like even the la meetings and the vegas it's just it's still i'm still trying to get comfortable with how fucking preachy it is okay i've heard that so here's where i am going to challenge you so communication is important but we don't like the meetings and we're not in therapy well no i'm still I'm so I look. I've only been in LA or in Vegas back for like two weeks. I still have to find meetings that I like. And how much are you allowed to communicate per meeting? It depends. Sometimes you're like the couple meetings I went to my first week here. There, there was some of them were book work, and I I don't want to go through the book and okay, like so. And they were like, if you haven't gone through these first three steps with a sponsor, you're not allowed to talk. And so I spoke when I got my my uh, chip recently, um, and. You know, I, I, I usually speak at meetings when I'm in LA. I just like, I like to, like, it's stuff that I like to do. And, and it's, it was also something I challenged myself. I challenged myself to, out of the five meetings I went to, to speak at three of them. Um, because it's, for me, it's part of that process that like, that helps and that I I can still enjoy because even if I'm not having like what we call a burning desire, which is the, the, you know what I'm saying? Like burning desire, people who don't know burning desire is if you're having thoughts about using, drinking, hurting yourself or others is what that is. What, what concerns me is this dude is that we, if we get back to the self-worth thing and you, when you when you get out of these things, you're definitely on your, the highest of the high, the best of the best. But my, what worries me is the feeling that I get from you that you've, and I'm, I'm hoping this is true. And I'm just, so I'm just being honest with you, but you have this feeling of you've got it all figured out. Do you know what I mean? Or figured out what's yeah, best. Yeah. No, but I, you're talking about communication, which is going to help you with, with your feeling of self-worth. It, it's, it's a little vague, which is fine. You don't have to get into exactly what that means, but I'm super worried about who you're, who is this communication happening with? You're not in therapy. What is this communication about? What does that mean? Communication as far as building your own self-worth. And if you are going to these meetings and you haven't just found one, I, I, I'm, I'm not saying you're poo-poo in all the meetings, but like the, the feeling of the self-worth part, 
is, and if you talk to people and myself included, dude, who have had to work on it a lot, that is a daily thing hmm. that is easy. I, I can, I picture having grooves in your brain, which you do. Well, the groove, the self-worth groove for me before I started working it, well, I was 50. So the feeling of being worthless, that's set, that, that was a huge groove in my brain. And I, to me, your brain always goes back to the easiest groove. So making new grooves is something you have to work on repeatedly or your brain eventually goes, this is the easier groove, man. This is the easier groove. What are we doing? The bad self-talk, all that stuff. So without daily, the 90 days is why I was saying it. Not that you needed 90 days away from the drug specifically, but the needed 90 days to start new habits and new ways of thinking about yourself. Mm. That stick. This is what I'm saying. We, it's still communication is just, and I, I'm could be a hundred percent wrong and just misreading it, but it just sounds so vague. Do you know what I mean? I I would understand that's vague. And by the way, the sober living home didn't make me feel better about myself. I know it didn't. It's part of why I left. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it, it honestly did the opposite. It helped me break the habits that I was doing. And like, honestly, look, when I had my phone, if I wanted to relapse in LA, I absolutely could have, but I, I didn't. I actually, I deleted, I think like my fourth week there, I deleted my plugs phone number in LA. What because was I, the thing that made you feel bad about the sober living? There were four. This is nothing against the sober living home, by the way. There's nothing against the guy who runs it for anybody who hears it. This is just my personal experience. There were a bunch of relapses and that's nothing against anything. That's what happens to sober living homes. But it, it just made me feel like there were, you know, people who have been in that house also who had already relapsed who are still there. There are people who have been there for three years. There are people who have been, you know, coming in and out. There was every, from every age from 19 to 50 in that house. I, I understand that addiction for me, like for people, addiction is a disease. For me, I see it more as like a demon. I see it as a demonic fucking thing. It does not discriminate. It takes who it wants and it does not give anything back. Mm-hmm. And I know that from personal experience in more than one way. Mm-hmm. That sober living house and being in that being in that field and like being on that structure and going to that that outpatient program like it made me feel like I was fucking crazy. It, 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 How come? I don't understand. I don't. I don't know, man. Like it made me like it made me feel like it was it made me feel like a child. It made me feel like I was on lock and key. It made me feel like I was like not a grown ass person. It made me feel like that I was that I was uh, a a a risk. Like it, it made me feel all the feelings I probably should have been feeling while I was doing drugs, not in a sober living. Mm-hmm. But, but feeling all those feelings, like, for the first two weeks, I couldn't walk to the grocery store by myself. I couldn't go anywhere by myself. I had to go to meetings with people. I couldn't go explore. I couldn't go do, you know, like, grown people shit. That was only two weeks. But it was, you know, and I, and I get it. I understand it. I get the rules. It was still annoying. That's beside the point. There were, just, I don't know. It just made me, it made me look more into what I believe is my degeneracy. Like, it made me go, oh, maybe I am just this degenerate. Maybe I am just this person. Maybe I I I'm I'm meant to be in a sober living for the rest of my life. Maybe mm-hmm. I'm meant to like like it made me think like that being an addict was my path because I ended up in this house with all of these other okay. addicts and alcoholics. And then also to see the people relapse, to see the the psychosis, the schizophrenia, like it was fucking wild. It was <laughs> I had some goddamn characters in that house. Mm-hmm. Like and look, shout out to the guys. Like I, I, I love those dudes. Like there are, there are dudes in that house that I, I really fuck with who I'm still sending memes to, right now. Yeah. Like, like dudes that I really, really enjoy. Um, and you know, I, I hope they're, and I know they're doing well right now. And I, I've been speaking to them, and you know, I've been speaking to some of the guys in the house about, you know, there are some things going down. But you know, I, I have to, at a certain point, I'll, I'll always check in. I'll always hope well for those guys, but. It's also a part of my life that I just have to put in my past and I, I don't want to revisit. I like, it's, totally it's get It's not it. something I want to go back to. Like, it's not something I like. It's like, yeah, I did it. Cool. I met some good people. I learned some things. I still don't think it was the thing that I needed or it was like a hundred percent necessary, but it is what it is. It happened. It's life. Yeah. You and I are going to always disagree on that. Always. We're going to disagree yeah, on it. Yeah. Like, and that's just going to be fine. Like it is what it is. Like, do I think I learned some awesome things out of that place? hundred percent. Do I still think it was a hundred percent necessary? No. Yeah. 50, 50, 50, 50. So, you know, I just, uh, so, all right. So tell me what you're doing now 
to that you think you're going to do now to help with your self worth? Because I think this is at the core, yeah, issue here. Yeah. Um. I mean, I would like to go back to therapy. I did therapy for the first time while I was in LA. Um. But but again, like therapy for me, like I don't know. I, I my therapist didn't have to ask a lot of questions because I. As you can tell, for the last 40 minutes, I've just been speaking. Um, so she never really had to pull anything out of me because I w- she would be like, so what's going on? And she'd be like, so what's th- what about this? And I would answer it. And then that would lead to me thinking about one thing or another and this and that. And mm-hmm. an hour and 15 minutes would be gone like that. And so I, I don't know. I, I would like to go back to therapy. I would like to try and find s- someone who, like, I, I don't know, tries to ask more in-depth questions because, like, I feel like that therapy where I was, was more just like addict based and like alcoholic based, which, which I get like mm-hmm. that's the program. Obviously they're therapists and they can ask you, they're, they're you know, they're and professionals and can ask you about more specific things. But I really also like, I, I got into my abandonment issues. I got into things about my past. I, I got into how I feel about myself, about, about, you know, choices I've made, things I've done. Like I got, I got into all of that. I don't know. I've, I definitely think there's something deeper. I just don't know yet what it is. Um, so I'd be down to go to therapy again. Like that's not completely off the table for me. Um, I, I think it was good for me. Like I, I'm not like, I think there was definitely some benefits for it, but that's the thing is like, there was nothing that was said in therapy that I didn't already know. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, I think finding a different or better, I don't know if better is the right word, but a different, different therapist was, who was not terrible. I think just getting it all out for the first time in your life is probably, was probably very good. Yeah. Um, but I, from what I understand about therapy, a lot of their job is to get you to talk. Right, right, right. But what I'm saying is like to get me to talk, but again, these are all like, I, I think there's something else that's deeper. I just yeah. don't know what it is at this point in time. Okay. Uh, but anything, the thing, here's the thing, anything I said in therapy is stuff I've said to, tons of people before yeah like i you know that i'm an open book I, i'm sitting here talking about my addiction yeah. right now on a podcast that we're going to post online yeah i don't care like there, i mean there are certain things i won't go out and publicly say you know this and that but like I, I am an open book so everything that i said to the therapist were things that i've already said or thought about or you know like n- knew about myself but there's so what there was, are, no, there was nothing discovered is what i'm saying so like, what I, I, are you going to do about it I was, like I said, man, it's, it's, I am encouraged and hopeful, right? But I also know how humans work. So what are you going to do on a daily basis to make sure that the, sl- that it's not a slow slide, that you're keeping your legs moving in the right direction? It, it is a daily thing. And that's whether it's making your bed every day or whether it's having a, a a list of things you're going to do the next day and checking them all off being whatever it is that continues to make you see that you're making gains and it's a positive thing. I'm do this positive thing every day. What are you doing on a daily basis to help yourself work? Honestly, right now, like my girlfriend, Iman is having like a work. We just set her up for a dental surgery coming up at the end of this month. Um, and so like, I don't like, Helping my self worth, like, is like I, I feel like also there was. I wronged her a bunch, especially in my addiction. Mm-hmm. I chose my addiction over her for almost a year, mm-hmm. and I feel like there's so much still for me to be made up in that, because like, I, I really did. I took. I, I there's so much time I can think of where I could have been and should have been home, and not out doing drugs. Like that I feel I feel like I, I deprived her of so much. And so part of making me like like that self worth is like it's being of service. Do you know what I mean? So I'm trying to be of service, you know, to her. I'm trying to be of service like in my house. Like I'm trying to clean up as much as I can. Like on Sundays now, like in the house we did double scrubs. So it's just like a deep clean type thing. So on Sundays now, like I, I deep clean the kitchen and I'm trying to just kind of be of service on the downstairs level and like, you know, sweep and mop the floors and just make sure there's no clutter. Like, I'm just like, there are definitely good habits that I took from, from, uh, the, the sober house. And so, you know, I, I think for me also, like, I'm still 
kind of trying to dis- to discover those things about what I want to do for myself to bring up that self-worth. I would like to go back to therapy, I think. I think that would be good for me because I think that'll help me, you know, uh, uncover a lot more things. I think going to the gym will help me with my self-worth also, like self-worth like inside, but also self-worth on the outside for my physical appearance will help me. Mm-hmm. Um, this is the longest I've gone without having abs in my entire life, and it's definitely mentally hits me. Cannot relate to that at all. <laughs> I've never gone a time without abs. Go ahead, Jacob Wolf. That's all right. What about when you were what about when you were two hundred pounds? First of all, I was not two hundred pounds. One ninety six. I had, I would call them flabs, because there was abs, but there was just two of them, mm. just the top ones. Mm. But you could still see them. Mm. I called you out right there. No, 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 you could still see them. Yeah. They were just flabs. You just had a protective layer over. Yeah, them. dude, they were flabs. <laughs> flabs. I have abs right now, but they were flabs. You could see them. You. Everybody knows what flabs are, where you could still yeah, see no, their abs. No abs. No. Yeah. No, not yeah. one giant ab. No, no like abs. you have. You have no. just a giant round ab. No, not true. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> um, <laughs> but I think, yeah, I think going to the gym will help myself for it just because like also my appearance, but also like, I don't know, man, like I, I do want to be of service, like more just like whether it's in my community, whether it's in the uh, sober community, whether it's helping out the homeless. Like, you know, we're going to go back to helping those dogs um, now that it's also getting super cold mm-hmm. here in Vegas. Uh, going back to helping the dogs at the shelter. Um, I, I think being of service is a great idea. I think um, I think that's what's going to help me the most, truthfully, is like, it's just being of service in any way that I can. And so like, I think that's, I think that's. that's I, I agree. Too. Being of service is great. I think you also should figure out a way for the first time of your life, in your life, this is going to sound dirty, but it isn't. To be of service to yourself, dude. You've always put other people in front of you. 100%. Um, and part of that is because you don't feel like you deserve it. But you have this incredible opportunity in front of you and a really cool life. And, and making sure you do things to not self-sabotage that. Mm-hmm. So you can actually do the things that you say you want to do. Mm-hmm will make you feel really good about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think also though, like that's, that's the crazy part about the addiction is I, even though I was self-sabotaging, I still did pick myself over other people for the last eight months because I would, but in a very self-destructive way. Right. But still Mm -hmm. like, but yeah, I I definitely want to pick myself for not self-destructive ways. Like, yeah, um, man. Like I come out of that. People like there, everybody there was like, you're going to abandon the program. I'm like, no, no, that's, not at all. I just feel like everything I'm doing here in LA, I can do back home in Vegas. Yeah. Like there was, there was nothing that I was doing there that I am not doing here. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I just get to live in the comfort of my own home and I get to live with my girlfriend and my dog. and I get to live in the state where my whole fucking life is. Mm-hmm. Not gonna lie, I was telling Matt before this podcast, that experience made me hate LA more. Hilarious. Like I, I will never go back to Venice in my entire fucking life. Yeah. Ever, 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 ever. Well, you weren't exactly in the great part. There's not really a great part of Venice. <laughs> the canals are awesome. No. Nah. The canals? They're all... Oh, those uh, are fucking what, towards, great. Towards like Marina? No, dude, the actual canals. You know the streets that have, that are water? Oh, yeah, they're not... The Venice canals are awesome. Not really. Okay. There's This is my thing. It's like, I just like... Venice was never really where I wanted to be yep. like prior when I was living in LA. No, I don't blame you. And now Venice is definitely not a place I would like to go back and visit. So tell me something, dude. Um... Okay, so how do you feel like, you know, over the last year, what do you feel like is like, because here's what I think, what I would love to see outside of your, what will come along with your self-worth and sobriety. I would love for you to really try to figure out who you are. Yeah, that's what I've been searching for my entire fucking life. I agree. That's and I think that's already. I think that was the goal going into it and coming out of it. Also, so I, like I think when this is why what I mean is you you. I've said this before, but uh, I'm gonna walk. I, it's my job to make sure everybody's happy, to be the happy guy, to put other people in front of you, to uh, to always think about other people and their happiness. 
all of that stuff, which you got from watching me. I apologize. I'll be sorry. So we are, but it doesn't have to be right. And so all those things came in front of who you are or who you want to be. So I want to, I want to tell you something, three things, dude. So watching Joey Diaz on stage, watching the 68 Elvis, uh, documentary on the Elvis comeback special and listening to this podcast with Cyan Bannister that was who was Tim Ferriss podcast where just one simple phrase wake up resonated with me in such a way because I think I I've been awake but wake up like this is one life who are you what do you want to do there was another ter- phrase in that podcast that it just doesn't matter but those together wake up it just doesn't matter isn't like a nihilist like it's more of a to me of such a an awakening of opportunity mm. because it doesn't it fucking doesn't and what i mean it doesn't matter it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what we do mm-hmm. so do what makes you happy say what so here's my challenge to you dude and I wish at two years into stand up, I had known this. Mm. You can't get fired. You can't get fired. Right? Mm. You're, you got a pretty secure job. True. Start talking and doing and being who you want to be. Mm. That is what will make you happiest in your job, in your life, in your art. And it would also attract the right, the secondary is, it will attract the right people Mm -hmm. and the people who you're like, these are my people. This is who, right? Mm -hmm. What, who you want, who are you? That's the first thing. If I were you, dude, I would get it, whether it's handwritten journal or just your voice memo and just start talking. Who am I? What do I want to talk about? What do I think about this? Not what does somebody who I talk to think about this? Mm -hmm. Not this is what this TikTok page thinks. Mm -hmm. Who, what the fuck do I think? What do I want to talk about? Who do I, who am I? Mm. And bring that to your art and on stage. You know, if I looked at your social media over the last year, I would have zero idea who Jacob Wolf is. Mm. Zero idea. And if that's by choice, that's fine. But I would say it's because you don't know. You're hundred percent right. So like, this is your time to, this is your time right now to, when we're on here together, I feel like you're pretty close to who you are. But there are also some times where I'll get answers from you where I'm like, oh, he's saying that because I think he thinks that's what he's supposed to say, mm. or he thinks that's what I think he wants him to say. Mm. I, that's, not, that's not it, dude. That's not, I promise you right now, I wish I had heard this at 27. That is not what's going to bring you happiness. What other people think or what you think other people want to hear. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, you're going to get judged no matter what you say. Mm -hmm. Might as well get judged for being who you are. Yeah. Fair enough. And so when you truly start to be who you are and you figure it out, this is when also a lot of self-worth will come in. Mm. By the way, when you first start just saying it and people are like, hey, fuck you, I don't, that's going to make you go, whoa, mm. yikes, mm-hmm. I can't say that shit mm. because someone's going to disagree no matter what you talk about. Right. Like I didn't need to be in a sober living home. That's right. <laughs> someone's going to disagree. But like, just start figuring out who you are. Yep. I want to... I want you to not get too comfortable. No, a hundred percent. That's what happens. And that's what happened in my drug usage is I got comfortable with where I was and I got comfortable with what I was doing on a weekly basis. And I made that the mics that I went to, who I was going to meet with, when I was going to get what I needed. I made it a routine because it was comfortable and because it's what I, I thought I wanted. It was not. 
I, I don't I don't want to get back to that being comfortable the era. Dude, I, w- I don't want you to be too comfortable in your recovery. In oh, oh. figuring that you got things figured out. I feel good about myself. I, I'm, I, it's something that is a daily drumbeat. Oh, yeah. The, somebody said it in a, in a treatment in, uh, at Thrive. He, he was like a daily thought thing. He was like, rehab or Thrive is not a permanent fix. Um, staying sober is like, a, is like daily work. Like it's something you have to put. They say one day at a time, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, And so, yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm still here. Like I, I know I, I know I don't have everything figured out. I know that as of right now, I think I, I think I know what I know. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't know what I don't know, which is why I don't know it because I haven't figured it out yet. So I'm, you know, I'm still moving through life cautiously. I'm still moving through life, uh, with head on a swivel. Yeah. I'm still you know, making choices to keep myself out of what I would believe are uncomfortable scenarios. Um, like I'm going to stick away from mics for a little bit. Um, I'm going to do the Monday shows here with us. I'm back on stage for the first time tonight in two months. Mm-hmm. A little nervous. Mm-hmm. Not going to lie. Mm-hmm. Uh, got to listen. I'm going to listen to my set. Got to listen to it a couple more times before I get on stage. I'm probably going to try something new on stage tonight. Uh, maybe a couple things. Um, you should totally. I, I'm I'm gonna yeah hundred uh, percent. I will say you did steal one of my jokes. That joke you posted about the clip from the other week about me getting a sober living home and me being a quitter. I didn't steal that. I the first day like when I got my phone back, I called you. I remember saying, "Yo, I, I've been thinking about this. Is this funny?" And I was like, "I don't remember that conversation." I I know you as, don't. I know you don't because as soon you as, posted it. Well, or because you did the joke. As soon as you, we were checking you in, I said that to your mom. I'm like, what's it like raising a quitter? Oh, hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the same exact, but I, I but, thought, I thought but that then I, I, then I just saw a t-shirt last week that said rehab is for quitters. I'm like, well, I can never tell that joke on stage ever again. No. Yeah. That's yeah. how, but that goes back to why I was saying this the other day. It goes back to why I don't tell jokes anymore because everybody can think of the same joke. Yeah. 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 I'm still probably going to do it tonight. I would. Yeah. Hey, why not? Yeah. I dropped my favorite part of that joke because you didn't like it. No, it's not because I didn't like it. I just felt like it might have been a little step over the line. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it, actually. I thought it was funny. It might have been a little too far over the line. I mean, um, the audiences love it. Yeah, I bet they did. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited. Like, I, I think I think getting back into comedy sober is going to also kind of reinvigorate me. I've, I've just been really like missing being on stage. Here's what I would say. The more you step into who you are and you figure out who you are, the more you'll step out of my shadow. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. It's just like, and I know that, and that's what I'm trying to do. Cause I, I, you know, obviously like compliments that I get on the road, people are like, you're your own person. Like you're not just your dad's son. That's the stuff that like, that makes me happy. That's the stuff that I want. Well, it also felt very comfortable for me because it's something I did for a really long time, which do is just you, kind of stand there like this. Do you think the do you think this current work setup and you going on the road with me and you opening for me and me paying you contributes to your feeling your lack of self worth? No, not at all. Okay, actually, because once I started going on the road and I started doing comedy, is when I started to notice that I was not I was coming out of your shadow. So if anything, it helps. Okay. It just, you know, it's great that you pay me also. So Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to have to get into that a little bit. Yeah, we talked about it a little bit, a little, <laughs> little, little bit. Yeah, I get it. We'll get into it. We'll get into it. Um, okay. This well, is, by the way, I did so much drugs that I still have residual little, little things every now and then, you know? Yeah. You know, people also ask me, like, how would you not know he was doing coke? He's had allergies for so long. Oh, yeah. You know, dating back to teenage. The teenage? Dating back to yeah, way before. Right? So, like, in the allergies, the allergies, I'm air quoting for those of you listening, started here in the desert. And he had lived up, lived in L.A. Yeah, so, it's like, so it windy, makes sense. Man. Very windy, new location, allergy. Yeah. It actually made sense to me. Why well, it was the perfect cover. 
Yeah, dude, I just. What <laughs> is there anything you feel like that moving forward you would like to see different in our work, our our personal? I'd like you to lay off my back a little bit. No. <laughs> no, um, yeah, I don't know, man. I, honestly, like. I think also, like, as much as you're my dad and you're my friend, I'd like you to talk to me more like business partners. Like, you started doing it a little more now, but you're not sugarcoating shit. I would like you to not sugarcoat shit. Oh, yeah, we're, we're, past, we're past that? We're past okay, that. cool. Great. Awesome. We're past that. Great, great, great. I, that's what I want. I, I want you to not be like, hey, I love you, but this is what I need. I want you to be like, hey, I love you, but step your shit up. Like, this is what I need from you. Like, you can't just, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want it to be. Yeah, yeah. It's, I would have fired you 30 times last year if you were just a regular employee. Oh, I know. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thirty um, times, thirty times, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred. Let's make it thirty-one this year. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's yeah, that's it. No, I mean, like, I know nothing's changed. Yeah, I know nothing's changed. So I mean, like, I, I don't know what else I would ask to change. Um, feel free to ask if you ever think that I'm on drugs, which I won't ever be. But like, don't ever be afraid to be like, hey, you seem a little. Everything good? Yeah, like, I mean, listen, I would ask. I would also expect you to lie to me, so it's... Yeah, I know, 100%. But yeah. you now also have seen all the signs. Like, you looking back on all of it, you'll know my tics. You'll know my things. If you see me sweating... There was one if time... If you see me sweating through every single shirt that I wear... Well, I do that, and I don't do drugs. Yeah, but I didn't do that yeah. until I did drugs. Dude, there was just one night, I remember, and I won't say his name, but you were playing running slots at the M... And I was oh ready. yeah, and I went home and I told your mom. I'm like, he seems super methy tonight. Methy, just speedy. You know, that's <laughs> what I for methy. And she was like, yeah. I go, oh my god, like, because here's the thing. It's not like I never did that drug, right? It's not like I haven't been around people who have done that drug. So like, when you were doing it around me, I would go home or a couple times. I was like that. After the Killers concert. Um, I also just won $400. Yeah. After the Killers concert. Um, Actually, and, no, I was just shit-faced at the Killers. Okay. It's just a, it was a different energy. Yeah. I was on like six shots of tequila also. Yeah. So there was that. So <laughs> after the Killers concert, in a couple times slots, I was, I told your mom, I'm like, this is completely different energy from them. I don't know what it is. I, I, and I, last thing I'll say is this, and then this will be, we'll call it, call it, you know, um, look, dude, the one thing, there's a multitude of things <laughs> about the Coke outside is the fact that it is an insidious drug. Mm. It never leads to good shit. Mm. It's usually only feels the way you're chasing a high from the first time you do it. Yeah. Right. The difference between that, which I went through too, although I never liked it really. I, I, I liked oh. it maybe the first time. I don't know how. I just didn't. It just, I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it felt. I didn't like it, how it had made everybody act around me. I didn't like how it made people really focus on the drug as opposed to each other. There were certain, I, I understand that there were certain people that I, that I did it with that I understand that, but also there, there were certain people that I did it with where it was like, we were still focused on what we were doing. Honestly, I figured out a couple of my jokes with people in that kind of circle. Well, again, I'm with it. Yeah. But the difference between when I was doing it and then when you're doing it, this is 30. Is people are just dying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Great, so grateful to be alive. This is why I would say, dude, especially just on the road, dabbling in it is like the single most frightening thing to me. So here's what I would ask. And by the way, dude, even though you and I have made a little bit of a, and your mom too, little bit of a pact where we're going to 
step out of your life. Mm -hmm. Not guys, when everyone said, but step out of his life, meaning, um, I don't know how to explain it. Um, not coming to my aid unless I ask for help. Yeah. Not being there all, but being there, being there, but like not being, not being there. Like, like, um, only coming to my aid when I ask for help. What but is, maybe not e listen guys it's not it's not terrible to let people fall no and to let them figure out how to stand back up and it's so weird that I did that for you I let you fall and stand back up on your own as a kid but as you get older I didn't as much interesting and I'm not sure why um figured out in therapy but <laughs> That is kind of what is going to be good for both of us. Yeah. Um, I think I, uh, we'll talk about it off because I, I think I, I think I would have a thought as to why. Okay. Um, but that being said, you obviously know any, if you need anything, right. Mm -hmm. And here's what I would say about the code. Just call me. If it ever comes up again. Yeah, yeah, that's here's the thing. Like just call me. Because yeah. The, it's what frightened me the most, dude, is that is that even to people who fall off the wagon with that drug now can just fall off the wagon and do one bump and die. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. So I just have to like Yo, that that's also one thing I have now and that I didn't feel like like I had it before, but I didn't feel like I had it. Like I know I have like the community and like I have you I can call. I have my girlfriend, obviously Iman, who I can talk to. I have all the dudes I like, Your every, mom. My mom, every ever all the people that I spoke to in LA when I was like, yo, this is my last day, they're like, yo, get my phone number. Like, please call me if you need something. Like yeah. I have so many new phone numbers now. And like I, I know that I have the, also now I have the ability to be able to talk about my feelings and if I'm feeling some sort of way. I haven't felt some sort of way since like my second week when I was in LA. Um, and whenever I'm feeling down, I always talk about it, but feeling down never makes me want to go use anymore. Like I don't, I don't feel the need to want to drink or to. to what about weed? Where are we at with that? Yeah. Like, yeah, I want to smoke, but. There's nothing I can do about it right now. Where we're at with that is that you think eventually you'll go back to smoking, but you're going to see how long that lasts. Yeah, I think I think I'll think eventually go back to being what they would consider a normie. Like, I don't think, though, I'll be going and smoking weed every day and, like, like smoking throughout the day or smoking as much as I was. Like, I definitely think uh, when and if I get back to it, it'll be a lot more controlled. It won't be using it as a crutch for anything. I won't be using it as like, I need to go to sleep, I need to smoke, or I'm not hungry, I should eat. I'm, I'll use it more as like a celebratory thing. I How will you know when it's okay to get back to trying that? I don't know. I think one day I'm just going to try it. But it's a, but as of right now? No, as of right now, I'm good. I don't really like, yeah, I want to smoke. There's tons of weed in my house. But like, <laughs> <laughs> like look, if I wanted to at this point, I would have. <laughs> but like, uh, why do you? I should have cleared out your house when I had the chance. Why? It's my shit. Just leave it. It's fine. There's nothing going on. I can't believe I didn't clear that out of your house. Yeah, it's a great way for me to do... To what? Self-control. Learn self-control. Do you just look at it every day? No, it's upstairs in a box in my closet that I don't even look at. I cleared it out. Like, it's all in one spot now. Just tucked away. All right. <laughs> Why'd you say it like that? Um, I'm going to take my stuff. My stuff. Anything in that house is my stuff. Um, I, I really should have taken it. Though. Yeah, tomato, tomato. That's not the saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, listen, dude. Potato, potato. Goes without saying. I love you. Love you too. And guys, I'm so excited to be back. Thank you guys all for uh, so many well wishes so every on, weekend. So many, so many. Yo, yo, on the video that I posted, the, the amount of Something like 600 comments on that video. Thank you, guys. I, I want you to know I did not respond to any of them, but I read every single one of them. Like I went through every single comment 
and and well wish and DM and yeah. So thank you for all the support. Um, thank you to my parents. Thank you to my outstanding, amazing girlfriend for holding down the fucking fort while I was gone. Um, and really, you know, still stepping up and 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 doing the absolute best that she can every single day. I'm so fucking proud of her. Um, and yeah, grateful to be here. Grateful to be back. Grateful to not be lying in a grave. Um, grateful to not even, even had a scare with it. Grateful to the people that I've met through the journey. Grateful for just grateful, grateful, grateful. So thank you guys. Um, it's a great first edition, first episode back. Um, as you know, as always, comedianjoshua.com for tour dates and tickets. Wait a second. Kansas City this weekend, Def December 5th, 6th, 7th, Anthony Schaefer featuring. Hell for, right? yeah. Hey, love my boy, Anthony. Uh, Oscar boy. But 5th, 6th, 7th, those shows always sell out. The next week, guys, on the 11th, I'm in East, on the 11th, I'm in Red Bank, New Jersey. On the 12th, I'm in Wilmington, Delaware. On the 13th, I'm in Newark, New Jersey. On the 14th, I'm in Easton, Pennsylvania. Those are with Tara. What's her last name? Constanticuloni. That's not it. She's gonna kill me. For that. It's so, it's like it's like something cannoli. Ah, no, yeah. no. It's I, at least I tried. At least I had. I'd have to look. If I yeah. looked at it, I could I could pronounce Tara, it. Tara, I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, she's our mom, right? So we have to send her. We have so to send her funny. this clip. Uh, and then the 19th and 21st, I'll be in the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut with Lisa. I at. Hell yeah. And um, the 25th, 26th, no, 26th, 26th, 27th, 28th of December, back on the road in Houston with Jacob Wolf. Yes, sir. And Lee Syatt. And Seattle, coming to you New Year's Eve, me and Sandy Danto. Hey. And by the way, guys, the, 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 the tour for Australia and New Zealand is already selling like fucking wildfire. Baby. Crazy. Go get your tickets to that now, comedianjoshwolf.com for tour dates. What else you want to tell them? Hey, hey, Australia, get ready. I, Australia, New Zealand. I'll be in Auckland for one day. So Auckland, please, I can't wait. Are we jumping off that thing again? We aren't. Yeah, you we. Might. Come on, let's do it. We are not gonna. Boo. Um, but yo, last time I was there in 2023, your boy was not doing stand-up. So I am very excited to come back to Australia and sh show you guys what I got. I'm super, super, super stoked. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm just very, very excited for that. Very excited for, you know, going back and, and, and doing our damn thing. Um, Hey dude, love you. Love you. Super proud of you. Appreciate it. I don't want this podcast to come through in any other way that I am hopeful for you and, and grateful that you're healthy and, and out and with a great attitude and not, you know, I'm back slinking around in the same streets mm -hmm. and that just know that your mom and I are here supporting you in any way. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as parents and people who love you, we end up making decisions mm -hmm. that we think are the best. Yep. And so there be, there may be times where you and I don't agree on those things, Yep. but all we can do, all you can do is, is just know that whatever decision we make, we make out of love. I do know that. And out of what we think is the best for you. Mm -hmm. And 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 there's no other way to put that. Mm -hmm. it, it, and, you know, there's certainly at times when you make decisions like that universally and unilaterally for somebody, um, there's collateral damage. Mm -hmm. And we understand that. And we wouldn't have... We honestly, same thing. We would make the same exact decision. I know. I know. Okay. I know it's what you guys think is best. And at that point in time, unfortunately, no one else's emotions, even mine, come into that thought process. Well, yeah, I mean, like I said, dude, you could have said no. Right. We've talked about this. We're not yeah. going to get into this. This yeah. is going to another hour if I get into this. Yeah. I, the, the, we're just going to leave it at that. I know I could have now. It did not seem like at that at the time. Right. Because when I said, is this a proposal? You said, no, this is what we're doing. Yeah, that, I watched a lot of... Uh, so it doesn't really seem... What did you watch? A lot of fucking... Intervention, intervention shows. Jesus Christ. No, I had... Just so you know, dude, we also called everyone we knew who had been in the program. Right, right. And no. they had all said, this is how you do it. Do not give him an option. Sure. Okay. 
<laughs> All right, everybody, we love you. Uh, wait, we're not going to do the plugs? Or you did oh, yeah. that? ComediaJoshua.com for tourists and tickets. He already did the, the dates of shit. Uh, Joshua Comedy on all platforms. Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Guys, I love you guys so much. We love you. Thank you so much. Houston, my first weekend back. I'll see you guys the day after Christmas. We'll talk to you later. Later, everybody. Hey, if you like this podcast you just watched, you're going to love the one I'm popping up in your face right now. Check it out.